uh, Shir uh, from the Hebrew University will take us into space. We'll hear all about it now. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Shir, and I'll be talking about a pilot trial of space in autism. SPACE is a treatment protocol which stands for Supportive Parenting for Anxious Childhood Emotions. This project was conducted in the Autism Child and Family Lab at Hebrew University with Michal Teretz and Judah Kohler, and also with Yara Shimshoni and Eli Leibovich, who collaborated with us from Yale. I'd first like to acknowledge some people who were involved in this project, Anelia Sheffer and Lira Sasportas from the Autism Child and Family Lab, who contributed to the study. And I'd also like to thank the Autism Center at Hebrew University and the Bitstein Family Foundation for supporting this project. So before I get into the space treatment and the current study, I'll first lay out the theoretical background behind this treatment, which stems from the term family accommodation. Family accommodation refers to the phenomenon in which parents make changes to their own behaviors in order to avoid or to alleviate their child's uh, distress, which is being caused by, the, by their psychopathology. Accommodations can include active changes to the family's routines, active participation in the child's symptoms, or the avoidance of stimuli which cause the child distress. In anxiety and OCD, accommodation has been extensively studied, and it has been found to associate with greater symptom severity, greater functional impairment, poorer treatment outcome, higher parental stress, and disturbance to family functioning. Examples of accommodation in the context of anxiety symptoms include talking for a child who has social anxiety, for instance, ordering for them at a restaurant, avoiding places or things that evoke anxiety in a child with specific phobias, or answering uh, repetitive reassuring questions for a child with general anxiety. Not only do we see high comorbidity rates between aut autism and anxiety disorders, with studies showing us that about 40% of children who are diagnosed with autism will also meet diagnostic criteria for an anxiety disorder, but we also see a high prevalence of family accommodation of anxiety symptoms in autistic children. These studies sh show that 97 to 100% of parents report, accommodating, er, report engaging in at least one form of family accommodation in a weekly and sometimes even on a daily basis. So next I want to show you a short clip from one of the participants from our study. Uh, we'll hear one of the moms who, participate, um, who participated describe some of the accommodations she provides for her child. The clip is in Hebrew, but there are English subtitles. Does it work? No? It's not working. No chesed, yeah. No? So I'm sorry you couldn't hear it, but um, she basically describes how every morning she's preoccupied with organizing everything from her son and taking away from his little brother so that he's all organized and not stressed before going to school, uh, which sometimes makes her late for uh, work. And she also described how because of his social anxiety, they have to prepare him uh, to every social event, uh, list everyone who's going to be there and where he can, he's going to sit and what they're going to do and have a really detailed plan um, of what's going to happen at this event. 
The most common treatments today for anxiety and autism include pharmacological treatments and CBT. While there is evidence for the efficacy of these treatments, the literature is limited and no treatment has received substantial empirical support. In the case of CBT, studies show that treatment protocols um, which have been modified to fit the, the autistic population lead to better treatment outcomes than protocols which are implemented as is. Here you can see the list of the most common modifications, for example, increased psychoeducation, the use of visual aids when working with the child, and the incorporation of the child's interests in the treatment. It's important to note that most of this literature shows that about 50% of children respond to this, these treatments, meaning that another 50% don't respond, and that it is necessary to continue to examine other methods of treatment for anxiety and autism. It's also important to note that most of this literature focuses on children with low support needs, so that it is also necessary to examine treatments which can be applicable to more heterogeneous populations. Which brings me to space. Based on the findings of family accommodation and anxiety, space was developed with the aim of treating childhood anxiety through the reduction of family accommodation. This is a parent-based, manualized treatment based on two main treatment goals. The systematic reduction of family accommodation along with the increase of parental support and the child's ability to cope with the anxiety. In anxiety and OCD, space has been shown to be effective, and a randomized controlled trial showed that it is not inferior to CBT in terms of treatment outcomes. It's also been shown that space can be implemented in a group set setting, as well as modified to treat avoidant restricted food intake disorder, and that it can be combined with, with CBT to treat anxiety in, in adults. I want to highlight that space is a parent-based treatment, meaning there is no need for active child participation which is beneficial as children who deal with anxiety can sometimes be too anxious to participate in treatment. And also because sometimes CBT protocols require a certain level of cognitive and communicative functioning from the child. Uh, so this suggests that space may be applicable to more heterogeneous populations. I'll quickly describe the treatment protocol. Um, what you see here are the eight different parts of the protocol, which are laid out over 12 weekly sessions. Um, as well as four optional modules which can be implemented as is throughout the treatment. So first, parents receive an introduction to space with psychoeducation on anxiety and family accommodation and the rationale behind working with the parents. Then sessions are dedicated to increasing parental support through the practice of supportive statements. These are statements which are defined as having two core components. The first, the acknowledgement of the child's emotions and anxiety, and the second, confidence in his ability to cope with the anxiety. For example, I understand how hard it is for you, but I know you can handle it. Then parents are asked to monitor their accommodations before choosing a target accommodation to work on based on criteria laid out in the protocol. The clinician then guides the parents in formulating a plan um, and inform informing the child of that plan. So the child is not an active participant in the plan and we're not asking for his approval, but we do wanna make sure that the child understand what, what the parents are planning on doing differently. The plan is then implemented with sessions focus, focusing on troubleshooting and problem solving before targeting additional accommodations and reaching the termination of the, of the treatment. So given the high comorbidity rates between anxiety and autism and the prevalence of family accommodation of anxiety symptoms in autistic children, the current study aim to examine the feasibility, acceptability, treatment satisfaction, and preliminary efficacy of space uh, with parents of autistic children who exhibit anxiety. Participants were 15 parents of autistic children ages six to 10 with at least average cognitive functioning um, who showed high levels of anxiety based on the screening questionnaire scared. While these sample characteristics are a limitation, given the pilot nature of this, uh, of this study, we thought a relatively homogeneous sample would be a good place to start. Clinicians were trained in space and underwent weekly supervision by a certified space supervisor, and the treatment sessions were conducted through Zoom, both because of the COVID restrictions and uh, in order to reach a larger geographic sample. In terms of our procedure, after initial screening for inclusion criteria, parents were administered the measures at baseline and then participated in 13 weekly sessions of space. I'll talk about the additional weekly session in a minute and they were administered the measures post-treatment, and again, two months after the treatment for follow-up. Feasibility and acceptability were assessed through enrollment and attrition rates and through the report of adverse events or effects related to the treatment, and satisfaction was measured through the CSQ questionnaire. 
In terms of diagnosis, it's important to point out that we did not see the children for clinical assessment, but rather relied on diagnostic reports provided by the parents to ensure the children met DSM criteria for autism. And we did administer the CAST, which assessed the social communication symptoms. In terms of anxiety, we administered the SCARED, which I mentioned earlier, and which has both parent and child versions. Um, we did collect child uh, data from the children, but our child data was limited. And we also uh, administered the parent-rated anxiety scale for youth with ASD, which is a newly developed uh, scale to me measure of anxiety, uh, developed to specifically fit the autistic population, and here we used it as a complementary measure of anxiety. For family accommodation, we use the family accommodation scale of anxiety symptoms, which has both parent and child report versions, but again, child data was limited. We also measured adaptive functioning using the ABAS, parental stress using the PSI, and parents were asked to fill out a demographic questionnaire, as well as to report on any adverse events or effects that could be related to the study. In terms of the treatment, clinicians adhered to the SPACE protocol, and we found that few modifications were necessary. The most significant modification was the addition of a treatment session in the beginning, resulting in 13 weekly sessions. This session was dedicated to increasing psychoeducation on anxiety and autism. We found that autism and anxiety have a lot in common and that it is necessary to elaborate with the parents on the similarities and the differences between the two, as well as to allow them to discuss their child's autism and anxiety presentations with the, with the clinician. Another modification which was implemented in some, but not in all cases, is the use of visual aids um, in the form of a communication board when informing the child of the parent's plan to reduce accommodation. So our results. Um, out of 26 eligible families, 22 elected to participate in the study and 15 successfully completed all treatment sessions. While the number of dropouts is noteworthy, it's important to remember that this study was conducted over the last two years with changing COVID restrictions, which, which brought, brought lots of changes to the family's routines and interfered with their ability to commit to the treatment. Um, and, but all of these participants reported personal or family-related reasons for discontinuing participation, and no adverse events or effects were reported. From the families who did complete all treatment sessions, high treatment satisfaction was reported, with an average of 28 out of a total score of 32 in the CSQ. In terms of preliminary efficacy, there was a significant reduction in anxiety symptom severity post-treatment, and this reduction was maintained at follow-up. There was also a significant reduction in family accommodation post-treatment, which was also maintained at follow-up. So both of the graphs you see here are of parent report measures, the SCARED and the FASA. Uh, similar patterns are found in the other measure of anxiety. And as I mentioned, uh, our child data was limited. We had trained research assistants administer the measures to the children through Zoom, but we found that some children didn't respond positively to the Zoom meeting or that they found it difficult to understand and complete the measures, which is why we chose to focus here on the parent report measures. What you can also see here are th is that there were interpersonal differences and relatively large variants, both in anxiety and family accommodation. So what I want to show you next um, is a graph showing each child's trajectory in terms of anxiety symptom severity. So here each line represents a different child, um, a different participant. The lines which stop in the middle are three children who we did not get their follow-up measures for. And what you can see here that's interesting is that at post-treatment, eight out of the 15 participants no longer met the clinical cutoff score on the screening questionnaire, and that at follow-up, nine out of 12 children were no longer um, above the clinical cutoff of the questionnaire. So this study provides preliminary evidence for the feasibility, acceptability, treatment satisfaction, and preliminary e efficacy of space and autism. As I mentioned before, few modifications were necessary. The additional session dedicated to psychoeducation and the use of visual aids. Another aspect, which I didn't mention earlier, is the flexibility of clinicians. So we found flexibility in terms of scheduling critical, um, critical to the success of the treatment. Um, we think this is mainly due to the external circumstances of the pandemic, but it may be something that is worth considering when uh, treating children with the comor comorbid psychopathologies and working with parents who deal with multiple areas of difficulties, and it may also be something that is not applicable in other settings. We also found that the role of supporters in the protocol and the supportive responses to be uh, significant during the treatment. Participant re 
participants responded positively to engaging supporters, whether um, friends, family members, or the child's teachers, during the treatment and involving them in the changes they were making, which is not something that we find trivial. And we think this aspect of supporters can also be um, implemented outside the context of anxiety to better support parents of autistic children. And supportive statements were also very significant. Uh, participants reported gaining confidence from these statements, and while we examined them only um, in the context of anxiety symptoms, we do believe that these statements can be implemented in other areas of difficulties as well. So it's important to consider these results in light of the study's limitations. This was a pilot study with a small sample size of specific characteristics, uh, no control group, and we relied on parent and self-report measures. So more rigorous and controlled trials are necessary to establish the efficacy of space in autism. And in terms of future directions, the next step we at the Autism Child and Family Lab are taking involves looking at family accommodation of core autism symptoms and not of anxiety, and specifically restricted and repetitive behaviors. We've already published a few studies on this relationship, uh, which show that the accommodation of RBs follows a similar pattern to that of anxiety in terms of symptom severity and functional impairment. And the focus of my PhD, which is in very early stages, is to examine how family accommodation uh, can be used as a port of entry to supporting autistic children in the context of maladaptive RRBs. Thank you. Um, I it's a small number of participants, but did you try to find uh, any differences about the severity of the autism and the response to the protocol? No, we didn't or, try it. Or any other thing that is related to that? As a clinician, sometimes it's difficult to understand anxiety by itself, uh, like panic disorder, or is it related to the core symptoms of autism? Because a, a person or a child with autism could be anxious uh, about sensory issues or, or about uh, changes in the environment or in the place. So did you try to make a difference about DSM anxiety or anxiety that is related to the core symptoms of autism? So we didn't try to, to fill out DSM criteria, but we did have that extra session to, to elaborate on that and to understand the child's different symptoms. Um, and then when choosing accommodations and targeting them, we asked the question, can this be stemming from anxiety? Can this be a symptom of anxiety? And if the answer was yes, then we, we said that we could work on it. Okay, more questions? Do you think you will get uh, some results with uh, Polish Jewish uh, uh, parenting? <laughs> It's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> we had families from all over Israel. <laughs> yes, question, please. I know the results are from an actual, uh, an actual system as opposed to just having support. Mm -hmm. how, did, how, how do you improve the causation as opposed to the correlation? So in this case, given that it's a pilot study, we can't uh, really prove causation, but we are saying these are the two things that changed, both the parental support and that they reduced their accommodation. Mm -hmm. That's true, and you would need a control group to see how these would work. I invite the team from uh, Safra Hospital, Sheba Medical Center, Eitan, Mariela, with the supervision of Professor Doron Gotthelf, uh, to share with us their uh, experience uh, of treating uh, children in their uh, new ward, uh, children with autism uh, that are hospitalized in their um, psychiatric ward.